Hey everybody, it's Tamara from Moogly and I am live on YouTube. It is 11.30 a.m. Central on February 12, 2020. So, happy Valentine's Day, everybody. I don't know if you've got big plans for this weekend. I don't have big plans. I've got a lot of crocheting plans. I'm hoping maybe for a nice dinner on Saturday when the crowds have passed. So, if you guys can see me, please do hit the thumbs up. Let me know you can see me. I'm going to hit refresh on my own YouTube page so I can see the video hopefully here in a few minutes and uh, answer your questions because that is what we are doing today. Um, I am going to be going live twice a month here starting in February of 2020 um, on YouTube. And so my goal is for the first time I do it live every month. Uh, let me just make sure my volume's off my laptop here. The first time I do it live every month, I want to answer your questions. I want um, just anything that I can answer live. Of course, some things are more complicated and require, you know, filming and editing and things like this, but anything I can answer live, that's what I want to do for you today. So I finally got mine to load so I can see mine now. Hi, Chris. Thanks for tuning in. Thank you so much. Um, so it looks like we're finally rolling, at least on this end. Uh, hopefully it looks good on your end. Looks like we've got a little bit of buffering, at least at my house today. Um, I'm at the end of a cul-de-sac and sometimes I don't get the best internet myself. So hopefully it is playing back smoothly for you guys. So a few minutes ago, I finished up my Facebook Live and on that one I talked about the current projects that are out, uh, the giveaways that are happening, um, the fact that I'll be at DFW teaching beginner knitting and beginner crochet uh, this April. So check that out if you're in the Dallas-Fort Worth area or able to travel to there. And hopefully I'll see you there as well. So hi, Creatively Tracy. Hi, Sharon's Crochet Corner. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, as I was saying, today, uh, for the first time, I'm going to be answering your questions live. So if you have live questions, you can put them in the chat. But I also put up a topic in the uh, Moogly community group on Facebook asking people for their questions there, which I plan to do every month as well. So I've got a few questions they ask me, and I will get right to it after I take a little sip of coffee here. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm getting over one of those terrible colds that's been going around. I don't know if they've been bad in your area, but here in Iowa, everybody, everybody's kids has had it over the past couple of weeks. So we're all a little wheezy here and there, but um, getting better, thankfully. Mine was relatively short-lived, so all right, let's get to it. Uh, the first question I got was from Adrian, one of the amazing moderators of both the Moogly uh, Afghan Crochet Along Facebook group as well as the Moogly community group on Facebook. She's fantastic. And Adrian asks, how do you find the time to do it all? Basically, this must be a full-time job. So many of us think we'd love to do what you do instead of our boring jobs. This is a great question, and it's one I do get asked fairly often, especially in person. Um, I will say that I think like anybody who works online, what you see on Instagram, when you see crocheters, um, pictures, you know, by the beach, they're crocheting by the beach or at that beautiful coffee shop or everything's beautifully displayed on a table with the coffee and everything just so. That's not real life. I'll be honest. Maybe for some people, maybe they have better time management skills than I do. Um, and maybe once in a while, I mean, I don't live anywhere near a beach. Once in a while, I get to crochet somewhere nice outside. But generally speaking, I spend a lot of my time at the computer. I know when I first started Moogly, I thought, wow, I'm just going to be like crocheting and designing and doing all this creative stuff all the time, not realizing the computer work was going to be pretty much a solid, I'd say minimum, minimum uh, four hours a day. And that's that's really minimum. I, for instance, Tuesdays, I tend to be online, uh, or at least at my computer, uh, starting you know first thing in the morning. Um, I do take a break on Tuesdays, go get groceries. Uh, one of the advantages from working from home is that I can just go get groceries in the middle of the day when nobody else is there. Um, so I'll take off, get groceries in the early afternoon, and then I will be on the computer again. Um, Tuesdays is my late night, often till about midnight. That's when I was on the computer till last night. Um, the designing obviously takes time. The crocheting takes time. I don't have contractors to do that for me. I do all my own crocheting and all my own pattern writing. Um, you know, no fault to anybody who does. I wish I you know, were that organized and had a big crew behind me, but it is all me. Um, with the help of my husband, Jeff, he does the video editing for our pre-recorded videos, of course. Um, he helps put together the newsletter and with any technical issues that I may have, um, and a little bit of graphic design here and there. Um, but, you know, essentially it's just the two of us all day, and it, it takes a lot of time. 
answering the emails, setting up the giveaways, doing the actual pattern writing and editing, taking the photos, editing those photos. It is a lot of just sitting at the computer, churning out work and answering emails. Um, so that's how I spend most of my daytime hours. Um, then I'll stop, make dinner, have dinner with the family, and uh, then it's back to work. I try at that point to get off the computer. I try to stay off the computer most evenings and most weekends uh, just to have that family time. But that's when then I'm doing the actual crocheting or knitting or crafting. Um, when I'm doing the actual designing, I've got my notebook. I write up my patterns by hand. I'm um, not one of those people who can type into the computer as I make it. I am a very organic designer. It's rare that I will plan out an entire pattern before I start crocheting or knitting it. Generally speaking, um, you know, it's something I'm, I'm just basically making it up as I go. So I have to take my notes as I go and then go back to the computer the next day or when I finally finished the crochet project and start writing that out into, you know, the actual lingo everybody else understands rather than my internal shorthand that I use, which is an even more abbreviated version of crochet pattern writing. Um, so that's kind of <sighs> this is what this is what I do all day. I'm on the computer. I am answering emails, whether it's from uh, questions from you guys or from companies. Uh, it's making videos. It's recording the videos. It's designing the projects. It's going through my calendar and deciding when I can try and get it all done. It is definitely absolutely a full time job. Um, on the weekends, I may not be on the computer. Like I say, I just need that for my own mental health. Um, I think that's a valuable thing for everybody. We all need breaks from social media and all that once in a while. Um, but I'm still crocheting. I'm still designing. And uh, yeah, so pretty much I'm, I am one of those people who I don't like to just sit. Um, I know some people, you know, when I first started crocheting, my husband, even just as a hobby, he'd be like, we're watching a movie. You know, why aren't you watching the movie? I can't just sit. I have to be doing something with my hands. So before I learned how to crochet, it was always some sort of crafting or at least I'd be folding laundry or unfortunately, possibly sometimes eating um, different things, you know, just to keep myself that little bit of busy. Uh, I'm not a good just sitter. So um, it's not, you know, it's not the worst thing. It's not that I'm complaining that I'm crocheting all evening till midnight or so um, at all. But it is definitely a more than full time job, I would say, running it. Um, but, you know, it's 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 got it's there's a lot of upsides there, too. My time is my own. If I want to take off on Tuesday to go get groceries or if one of my kids has a school meeting um, or a doctor's appointment or I have a doctor's appointment, I don't have to worry as much about, you know, scheduling those things out um, around my work. I can say, OK, that's full. Cool, cool. I'll take Wednesday afternoon off and do that. I'll just work Wednesday evening a little bit more or something. Uh, so there's definitely advantages. I love, love, love talking to you guys, helping you with your crochet. Um, I really enjoy the designing part. You know, sitting down at the computer, pounding stuff out is not, you know, and it, most people's favorite part of the job. Um, but, uh, you know, it all it all has its perks. It all has its good things. And I really love that from um, hour to hour every day, I'm doing something a little bit different. So that's kind of an overview of my day. I will say I uh, probably fall behind on a lot of the taking care of the house stuff that I should be doing. Um, thankfully, Jeff is home with me uh, working full time, you know, to help support Moogly and the house. So he takes care of a lot of those things like laundry and running the kids around, just picking them up from school. Uh, we still have two kids in middle school, although my daughter has graduated high school. So um, her official graduation will be in May. She finished a semester early. So um, yeah, we just, we stay really busy. Um, and basically running a business like this, I find is a matter of squeezing it in, in between other things. Um, taking that hour here, that hour there, uh, taking that project with you in the car, um, all the things, you know, you might be able to choose to, you know, sort of leave or say, ah, I just don't want to work on it for a week. I have to keep working on it. And I think that's probably the hardest part is uh, just always having to be ready to move on to the next project. Um, I have a million ideas, but deciding which one to make next and which one I'm going to have the time to make next. And am I, am I going to be able to create the project that I have in my head and really honor the vision, the creative vision that I'm having myself? I think those are my biggest challenges uh, within that job. So I don't, know, I don't know if that's exactly what you're asking for. It's probably a little bit more information than you wanted, but that's, that's what my days look like. So thank you so much. Come back down here and check the comments. 
So thank you so much. Yeah, I'm sorry I was a little close on the Facebook Live. Like I said, we were having technical issues this morning, so I was trying to trying to do it from my computer. My computer wouldn't connect to Facebook, so I had to go to my phone, and so we ended up kind of right up in the face, but <laughs> limited space. That's what we could do. So uh, Chris wants to know, does Jeff have an outside job as well? No, um, Jeff was a professional, um, well, and I guess in many respects still is, a professional cameraman, graphic designer, video editor. Um, I, I married very luckily there. That was not pre-planned. Um, <laughs> but uh, no, he was able to quit his job, his outside job, a few years back and come home and work with me full time, which has been fantastic. Um, we've had some health challenges in our family and things that have made that to be a really good thing. It turned out to be a really well-timed thing for us. It was risky. Um, Moogly is our only income as a family. Uh, so I'll just go ahead and put that out there. Uh, so yeah, it was a risk, but it's paid off so far. And um, I'm just, I'm really glad he's home and that he's able to be with me every day uh, dealing with the business as well as the family. I think it's been a really great thing for our kids to be able to have both parents, although very busy, um, certainly around home and available a little bit more than other kids are lucky enough to be able to have. So that's been really great too. So let's see. Um, hi, Rosa and Chris. Uh, let's see. Oh, yep. Chris, you're the same way. You love to love to keep the hands busy. And let's see, Kelly. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you so much, you guys, for your nice comments. So, okay, let's move on to question number two. There's not that many, thankfully. I won't ramble for this long for all of them. Um, Diane Douglas Termini, I'm sorry if I'm mispronouncing that, says, can you recommend some resources for learning to design crochet items, books, websites, classes, etc." cetera? Um, yes, I can. Um, basically, when I started to want to learn how to crochet, gosh, I'm gonna try and keep this shorter. Uh, when I first started to want to learn to design, rather, I thought there must be like some classes somewhere, almost like a college course you should take. Um, so I felt really unqualified. Um, that's, you know, part of the reason Moogly's named Moogly. Um, it was a daughter my word came up with, meaning, you know, unsteady and unsure, um, uneven. And that's how I very much how I felt. I felt like I didn't know what I was doing. And I was just throwing it out there and seeing what stuck. Um, so yeah, unfortunately, there's not a series of classes or a college course or anything like that for crochet design. I would recommend um, definitely reading other, learning how to read other people's patterns in a variety of styles really, really well. Um, you need to be secure in your pattern reading and following skills uh, before you turn around and start writing them. Then what you want to do is go ahead and just try and write up a pattern for something really, really simple. Um, design yourself, oops, sorry about that. Uh, design yourself a scarf or a cowl or a hat or something, you know, relatively simple, something you've made a million times before, but go ahead and try and write down what you're doing as you do it. And then go back and look at other crochet patterns and see, oh, that's how they're phrasing that, or that's how they're writing that. Um, honestly, that's how I did it. I just started trying to write it and then checking it. Um, a great resource though, in terms of books is definitely Stitch Dictionaries. And I have a stack here of just a few of them. Oh, it's shaking the whole table. It's a heavy stack. So this is just some of the stitch dictionaries that I literally keep at my desk on a shelf every day. Um, I've had people say, oh gosh, you've been designing so long, surely you don't still use stitch dictionaries. Absolutely I do. Um, there are hundreds, if not thousands of stitch patterns. And the actual stitch patterns, these, the way they're written and the pictures and the things like that that are in the book are absolutely copyrighted. But the stitch pattern itself, like the linen stitch or the granite stitch or the griddle stitch um, or, you know, a post stitch pattern, the alpine stitch is really popular right now. Um, none of those, the stitches themselves don't belong to anyone. Um, some of those names might. And a lot of these books will use different names for the same stitch patterns. But those stitch patterns can be hugely key down at the bottom of each page. Um, I learned about multiples. I learned about, you know, just the text of writing them out. And my style's not exactly the same style that I found in this book. It's evolved since then. But this was my original. And I just wanted to point this one out. Although, unfortunately, like I say, I don't know that you can still get any copies of this. Um, if you have a book you love, go ahead and have it professionally spiral bound because it's worth it. Um, another one that I use a lot, this was probably one of the second one, maybe the second one I got, The Complete Book of Crochet Stitch Designs. This one has 500 patterns in it. This one's kind of, um, 
you know, they all have their ups and downs. They all have their good points and bad points. This one's really interesting because um, it does still have charts, which I love. But all the swatches are sort of in this off-white color, um, which can, it's sort of a blank canvas. You kind of have to look at it sometimes and say, well, if I used color this way, how would it change that design? Um, you know, how differently would it pop? Uh, in a different weight, what would it look like? But I like this one a lot. This one's got some great reference pages that you can just kind of go right through. Um, another one, a little bit newer one. You can see all my post-it notes sticking out. Melissa Leitman's Indispensable, Indispensable Stitch Collection for Crocheters. Love this one. Um, this one's probably the newest one in my collection. The Crochet Every Which Way Stitch Dictionary by Dora Orenstein. This one is great because she also has uh, charted out some increases and decreases. Uh, different ways, mostly increases, I would say, but uh, it's very, very helpful for if you want to get into shaping. So a little bit more of an advanced stitch dictionary. And then there's tons of great ones that you can get, um, you know, Leisure Arts, Annie's, they all have, you know, ripple stitches or shell patterns. Um, I have a bunch of those. And then this one is one of my favorites too. This one's actually a Japanese book. And if you know how to read the charts, which I highly recommend you learn, if you don't know how to read the charts yet, this one, no words, just pictures and charts. But I love it. Um, just some different different stitch patterns that you won't find elsewhere. And that's what I that's why I have a big collection of them. N I have never found one stitch dictionary that has every stitch pattern out there. And I don't think you could because there's new ones always being invented. That's part of the fun of crochet, right? Um, you take those little bits and combine it into something new that hasn't been seen before. So let's see. Um, let's see. Just checking the questions. Tiffany Smith, you want to learn how to create graphs. Uh, there is a pattern, or excuse me, a website for that. Stitch Fiddle. Uh, like as in, you know, fiddle. <laughs> like a violin, like a fiddle. Um, check that out. Stitchfiddle.com, I think is it. If you just, you know, Google the term Stitch Fiddle. Um, Google, Yahoo, Bing, whatever. Um fantastic website um, play around with a little bit you can uh, there's free versions there's paid versions but if you want to learn how to create graphs that's a lot a uh, lot easier I think than pulling out the graph paper and colored pencils and trying to color all that in um, the American Crochet, Crochet Association does some pattern designing classes um, sometimes you'll find those at the Crochet Guild of America conferences as well um, and I'm trying to think where else uh, basically, anywhere you get crochet teachers once in a while, you'll find a crochet pattern design class. Um, they're a little rarer um, because I think we all have our own methods of doing it to some extent. Uh, Edie Ekman is often a great resource for pattern writing tips and skills. And um, there was something else I was going to mention. Oh, Professional Development Day. I almost forgot. Uh, crochet Guild of America. Every summer we have our chain link conference and there is Professional Development Day. And full, disclo full disclosure, I am on the committee planning it this year, um, but that covers a bunch of topics too. Not necessarily so much a how to design, um, but and that changes from year to year too, but a lot of times there's topics like how to get into other forms of crochet uh, career stuff, like uh, does, do these instructions make sense? Um, it's one of those, it's genuinely one of those skills where you just kind of, for the most part, you learn it by doing it and getting feedback and striving to be better, which is something I know I'm always working on. Um, my early patterns are not, I think, as good as my later patterns. Um, and I try and go back and update those and sort of fix them and zhuzh them up a little bit as I can. Um, but we're always, you know, when you know better, you do better. And you start where you start and just try and improve as you go. So let's see. Oh, I did say your name correctly. Thank you so much, Diane. I'm so glad you were able to tune in. Uh, do I feel that people are trying to recreate stitches? Well, I mean, I'm not sure what you mean by recreate, Tiffany. I think that, um, you know, like I said, there's definitely overlap. You're going to find the linen or granite or whatever name you want to give it. Uh, seed, moss, I've seen it called all those. The one where you've got the chain one and you single crochet in it and skip it. Um, you're going to find that in pretty much almost every stitch dictionary. I think maybe the Japanese one doesn't have, and that's, or the ripple one, you know, but there's definitely um, overlap. There's some basic stitches, the basic chevron, um, things that once you've been crocheting for a while, you might say, ugh, that's everywhere. Well, if you're a new crocheter and it's your only stitch dictionary, you're going to be glad it's in there. Um, I was certainly very glad for all that basic stuff in my first book. Um, so I don't know. I think that, um, you know, there's, 
there's always a new way to approach it. There's always a different way to write that line of instruction um, that might make more sense to one person than another. So as much as we might feel like, oh, this this book or this project or this resource is the end all be all in crochet, someone's always going to have that different perspective, that different way of putting it that's going to help those, that other group of people who weren't getting it yet. Um, we all have our own way of speaking. You know, it's it's just kind of like I was talking about this morning on Facebook. There's a project for each yarn. Um, not every yarn is going to work for every project. Not every designer, not every design book, not every style is going to work for each person. And it's okay to go out there and find the person um, whose work most speaks to you and whose work you most want to emulate. And uh, then to go on and find your own style and find what communicates best for you and what you think is the best way to put it. Um, you do want to stay within the standards. A big resource I would definitely recommend is the Craft Yarn Council. Um, they're sort of the uh, the end the end point, <laughs> the definitive, like this is right, this is wrong, um, as much as anything is in the world of crochet. Um, so that's a really good resource as well. The Craft Yarn Council has not only information on things like abbreviations, but also all your uh, sizing standards. So if you're looking to design garments or anything that needs to fit, basically any, anything other than a scarf or a blanket, uh, you'll definitely want to check out those sizing standards there as well. They've got women, uh, men, children, babies. Um, they've even got some feet measurements now, which is fantastic. So um, they also have all the information on like the different yarn sizes. They're sort of, the re they are, I would say, the authority on that. So definitely check out the Craft Yarn Council dot, or just craftyarncouncil.com or the Craft Yarn Council if you want to Google it um, for those sorts of resources as well. So let's see. Sharon, do you know where the convention is this year? If you are referring to the Crochet Guild of America convention, chain link, it is in New Orleans. I'm very excited. Uh, yes, it's New Orleans in July, so it's going to be warm and humid, but I live in Iowa, so I feel like I can take it. Um, and of course, they have air conditioning, um, but I'm excited. I've never been to New Orleans before, so I'm hoping to tack on a couple extra days um, with hopefully Jesse and uh, be able to explore the city a little bit. I'm excited to go. So yes, the Crochet Guild of America, that is in New Orleans. So let's see. Oh, and Chris got you too. Thank you. All right. Um, social league. Oh gosh, now I'm not going to say this one right. Social ego. Social lego. I'm sorry if I'm probably mispronouncing it. What are my favorite yarns? Um, oh, that's like asking who my favorite designer is. Um, I can't narrow it down to just one because they all have different properties. Um, like I say, each project has its own yarn. If I wanted to make a basket for a kid's room to hold their toys or maybe one for the bathroom to hold makeup bottles or something like that, I would probably turn to something like Red Heart Super Saver. It's going to give me the stiffness I want when I work with a smaller hook. It's going to be highly washable, dryable. Um, I know that kid's not gonna, you know, ruin it by looking at it funny. Um, you know, I know that if the pets get a hold of it, it's probably gonna be fine. Um, as opposed to, uh, for instance, I'm currently in the mental process of designing my next sweater. I've got almost all of it figured out. And I will be using something far more, you know, f you know, just not necessarily delicate, but something far different than uh, Red Heart Super Saver, probably something by Peyton's, uh, something a little more upscale. So I've used, I've used everything from cashmere to mohair to Red Heart Super Saver to, you know, and everything in between. And I don't know... I would say the only yarns I don't like are the ones that fall apart on me while I'm crocheting with them. Once in a while, you'll hit a yarn where if you give any attention to it, it'll just rip apart. Um, sometimes with the roving style yarns, some of them, not all of them, some of the roving style yarns, that can be an issue. Um, and I don't like ones that shed a lot in the air. I'll be honest, I, done, I did not like crocheting with Angora. Um, nothing against the pretty little bunnies. But uh, the little fibers got into the air too much and they went right up my nose. So that I didn't like. And I wear a lot of black. So anything that sheds too much is a problem. Um, but other than that, no, I really feel genuinely that every, every yarn has a project that's going to be just right for that yarn. Um, beyond that, it's personal preference for sure. Um, Karen Buchanan Furden wrote on the Moogly Community Group, I would love to have a choice of items to make that do not include gloves, hats, scarves, and heavy afghans since I live in Florida. 
And I hear you. I don't feel you right now. It is about 20 degrees here, but I hear you. Um, and I do have a couple patterns like that on Moogly. The Sea Glass Summer Cardigan is a great one. I would say anything made with the lighter yarns um, is going to be great. Let me, it's a little far away. It's up in the corner there. But uh, the Red Heart, it's a wrap line if you want to search for anything made in those yarns. Yeah, anything made with like a one or a two weight yarn is going to be better. Um, also check out, this is going to sound kind of odd, but check out designers and crochet patterns designed for Central and South America. Um, there are some really, really gorgeous designs coming out of those countries and because of the different climate they typically use thinner yarns a lot of uh, cotton thread um, things like that and there's just some really really gorgeous stuff that is specifically designed for warmer weather um, I live in Iowa so it's very easy for me to you know love a chunky cowl or a warm hat or a cozy blanket I loved making a blanket this week because I was under it the whole time I really needed it I think at one point when it was small I had another blanket underneath that one um but you know I I, I, I hear you and I'm hoping to get some of those lighter weight stuff out uh this summer myself but only so many weeks in the year so I would recommend checking out some South American and Central American designers for that lighter weight stuff um if you're a confident crocheter um, like, you know, very much you can kind of get the idea and go off on your own. I would say also check out uh, the Russian and uh, Japanese designs. Um, a lot of times those definitely are chart based. You would need to be very confident chart reader. Um, but if you can get your hands on some of that stuff, there is some really, really gorgeous lightweight design happening out there right now um, coming out of those countries as well. And like I say, um, you know, as summer approaches, hopefully I'll get a few lighter weight ones going myself. So let's see here, just checking for questions. Um, thank you so much, guys. Thanks, Crafty Ferret Mama, for tuning in. I appreciate it. And Brenda and Nicola. Um, so let's see here. Come on down here. Uh, Lorelei Bibbler. Uh, names, difficult names, but very pretty name. Uh, what is your favorite way to join a new ball of yarn? Well, <clears throat> there are many different ways out there. Some people like the Russian join. Uh, some people like a knotted join. Personally, I tend not to trust knots very well myself. And the Russian join method, I really only like when it's a yarn that has a lot of uh, wool or fiber content that will allow the yarn to really grip on itself. Um, wool actually has scales in it, um, just the way it's made. And those will link onto themselves. And that's one of the reasons, you know, when you weave in an end with wool, it's going to stay in a lot better. Um, so when you do like a Russian or a knotted join like that, that helps as well. If you've got a slick yarn, something like Karen Simply Soft, we were talking about earlier, um, it's not going to work as well. It's just going to pull, those knots are going to pull back out. So um, if we come down here to the table from our overhead camera, I've worked up just a little line of crochet here. And I was actually going to demo something else with this here in a minute but let me I'm going to go ahead and take a stitch here and I will show you when I want to change yarns now whether it's the same color or a different color I'm gonna go ahead and pull up a different color this is Bernat Maker Big this is a really fun yarn but let me pull up some of this length here and what I like to do like I say even if I just have to add a new ball of color uh, a new ball of the same color I tend to start my stitch and then yarn over and pull through with the new ball. Now this is a really clean way to do it if you are switching colors because then as you start that next stitch you've got your next color right there. Let me drop that end down there and just start making that next stitch so you can see just how beautifully and clean that color changes. But it's also just a great way to go ahead and change your yarn even if you aren't changing colors. Then I just weave that end in and I would weave that in under the same color stitches, you know, rather than that. And then when I cut this one, I would weave this end in these stitches. But that really is my favorite way to do it. I know it's very simple. It's almost old fashioned in a way, I suppose. But I find that it really gives the cleanest color changes. And um, it's just, it feels more secure. I'm just a really big fan of weaving the ends in really, really well. So if we come back up here, let me get my question list here. 
Uh, Crystal Hendricks Kretzer, can you do a demo of circle yolk color work or maybe just color work in the round? I've not been able to find any help with my weird issue with my slanted stitches. Well, I'm not going to make a whole yoke for you here on camera, um, but if we come back down here actually to the table, and I'm going to go ahead and pull these darker colors out because I think the lighter green here is going to be a little bit easier to see. All right, so this obviously isn't in the round. This is just one little row here of half double crochet, but I want you to look at that top V. When we look at the stitch itself, this is from the side I just made. When you go in, and maybe if I do this from back, it'll be easier to see. You can see when you go under both those loops, how those are the top loops of this stitch. They're slightly offset to the right. This is what creates that slant. Now I'm right-handed, so mine are gonna slant this way. If I were left-handed, if I just flip that over, although this is the back of the stitch, kind of the same thing though. That little opening is to the side. It's not directly on top of the stitch. And this is what creates that slant. So when you're working in the round, because you're not turning back and forth, you're not evening that out. When you go in rows, you'll have, you know, one stitch will be to this side, then we come back over, the other stitch will be to that side, and it evens back out. When you're working in the round, you're always going to be working slightly offset. So there are a couple of different things you can do uh, to combat that uh, issue. Because now you'll hear different things about people have different, like, oh, if you slip stitch to this part or that part, it'll straighten it back out. Well, yes and no, because this is always going to be offset. That part isn't going to change no matter how you joined the end of the round. So one of the most common things, and you'll see this most often in tapestry crochet, um, but again, color work is a great opportunity to use it. Work the next round in that back loop only. So if I pull up my next color here, and I'm just going to go ahead and make some single crochets right in this back loop only. Nothing fancy. Didn't even leave enough to weave in. <laughs> this is a thicker yarn, so I would use a little bit more than six inches to weave in just to give myself that space. There we go. So now, again, if you're not familiar with the back loop only, front loop only, I'll take a minute to explain that. It's always relative to the crocheter. It refers to that top V, and the front loop is always the one closest to you and the back loop is always one furthest away. So when we crochet under just that back loop, it actually lines those stitches up better. So hopefully you can see, it still looks like it's a little bit off to the right, but those loops on top that we're going to be working into, that top V is far more lined up. And working in that back loop only is a great solution. It does create a little bit of a line there, but it keeps those colors lined up really, really beautifully. So you'll see that a lot in tapestry crochet. The other solution is to stop working in uh, rounds and work in rows. Now, obviously, if it's a round yoke sweater, you want to have that join at the end. But just because you are turning doesn't mean, find my end here, doesn't mean you need to only work in the same direction. So this is kind of a little swatch here, but. I'll go ahead and join it. I'm getting myself all tangled up here in my yarn while I talk. There we go. If I slip stitch and join this first row, it's a little twisted, but you get the idea. There we are. Rather than continuing to go in that same direction, even though I've joined, I can chain or however many I need and then turn and work from the inside of the sweater for the next row. The sweater, the bag, the basket, whatever it is. This is a technique I use a lot uh, for projects made in the round where I want to avoid um, getting that slant, but I also don't want to work in the back loop only. For instance, if I was making a basket, I would want it to be sturdy. And when you work in that back loop only, you're adding drape. I don't want to add drape. I want to turn around and go the other direction. So you can just go the other direction, work from the inside of your project. And then when you get all the way around, go ahead and join and turn essentially, and then work from the outside of the project again. When you do this, I do recommend that you use a stitch marker in the first and last stitch of each round so you can always tell where they are because when you do that turn, it's very easy to accidentally end up crocheting back into that slip stitch that you joined your row with. So either of those techniques tend to work really well for uh, working those round yokes without getting, or any round project without getting that slant or the lean for your color work. 
So definitely check that out. And then we can come back to our questions here. And it looks like I have just one more question. I don't see any more on the live broadcast here. If you guys do have questions, please do let me know. Oh, I do see one. I do see one that I missed. So let's see here. Uh, Knots of Mayhem. Great name. I love that. It asks, how do you become a member? I'm trying to develop a sweater course. A member of the Crochet Guild of America? Um, I'm hoping that's what you're referring to because that's the one I know the answer to. Uh, to become a member, all you need to do is go to crochet.org, uh, fill out the form, and I think it's like $35. I hope that's right. Um, it depends a little bit because part of the um, part of your membership benefits is getting a, uh, it includes a subscription to Crochet Crochet Magazine. That's the Crochet exclamation point one. Crochet! Um, I always like to say it that way. Uh, it includes a subscription to that, and it's a special issue with a newsletter inside. Um so depending on whether you want that digitally or you want the paper copy, that changes the price of the membership just, you know, by a couple dollars. Um, and if you're international, I think digital is the only option right now, uh, simply because of shipping costs around the world right now. Um, but it's relative, it's probably the cheapest membership to anything I have, honestly. Um, and yeah, you can, then you get discounts for the classes, um, the master's programs, mastering crochet, the fundamentals. Um, the more advanced programs, some of which are still in the works, which is exciting. Um, so yeah, it's, it's pretty, it's very easy. There's no vetting, you know, we're not going to be like, well, how good are you? You're not good enough. You know, you can, any, all levels of crochet are very much welcome in the Crochet Guild of America, crochet.org. Check it out. Let's see. Um, so, and good luck with your sweater course. That is, that is a big thing. A sweater, a sweater course would be an amazing class to have. So let's see. Good morning. Thank you. And Sharon Tomlinson. Oh, I was just about to answer your question. You put it on the chat too. That's awesome. It was the last question I'd printed out from the uh, group. So Sharon asks, I heard crochet and macrame are some of the fashion tr trends for spring. I would like to see jewelry, especially earrings. <clears throat> Excuse me. So in the Moogly community group, I did post a link in response to you, Sharon, uh, but I'll go ahead and say here, uh, anytime you go to mooglyblog.com, if you're on a desktop, it should be on the right. If you're on mobile, it'll be towards the end because it, you know, mobile always squishes everything into a column. Um, there is a search bar. And if you type in earrings there, I have a pair of earrings that I recently made on the Cricut, which are sort of macrame inspired um, that definitely use yarn as well as a thread earrings pattern and a whole collection, a roundup of free earrings patterns. It's an older collection, so I haven't gone back to make sure all the links are good yet, uh, but it does exist on the Moogly site. Um, I do agree. Yeah, macrame is still a huge trend. I was at Creativation last month in Arizona, uh, which is a big conference for basically everybody in the industry. I think it's where Michaels and Joanne's come and get a lot of ideas about what they're going to have in stock in their stores. Um, so it's always very exciting for me is little old me to go in there and be able to poke around and see what's new. Um, and yeah, macrame was everywhere. Absolutely. And I have seen it picking up a little bit more in uh, jewelry just this past week, actually, on Pinterest. Sharon, I might need you to be my trend spotter. Um, good, good spotting, seriously. Um, so yeah, I think, I think those are still definitely, um, definitely on the horizon. I have tried macrame. I'm not going to say I'm great at it. Um, but it's a lot of fun. It's basically nodding. Um, I feel like, I don't know, maybe I am doing it right and I'm just not feeling very confident about it yet. Um, but it is a lot of fun and I think I haven't seen it on earrings yet, but I think that's an amazing idea and, uh, I'll have to play with that and see what I can come up with. That's, that's pretty intriguing. Hmm. I like that idea. So thank you for that, Sharon. Um, hopefully, yeah, hopefully we'll keep seeing more designs, you know, say they take time. Hopefully they'll get out there. So let's see. Um, I want to make sure I didn't miss anybody's question. So I'm just going to scroll to the top of the chat here and sort of skim it a little bit. I want to thank you guys so much for tuning in and sending in these questions. Um, like I say, I'm hoping to go live twice a month from here on out. So the first one, um, the second one, I'm hoping to have like a little demo every month. But the first one is definitely just going to be answering your questions. So, oh, here's one I missed. Uh, Dream 9 Design asks, uh, thank you for inspiring me. Well, you're very welcome. Thank you so much for tuning in. I am growing my channel and hope to be uh, w like you one day or with you one day. How long did it take you to grow your YouTube crochet tutorials? Um, 
Oh, gosh. Well, you know, it's funny. Um, I was talking a little bit about Jeff and how he used to be a video editor. Um, well, still is professionally, but, you know, on a smaller scale now. And he really pushed me uh, to get into YouTube. It wasn't something I was initially interested in for myself. Um, sorry, YouTube. Uh, <laughs> but uh, I just felt like there were so many, you know, things out there already. I would just be adding to it. Um, but he really encouraged me to do it. And I think that one of the things I'm glad I did at the beginning was make a lot of the basic stuff, like how to single crochet, how to half double crochet, how to double crochet. Um, I would love to go back and make better copies of those now. Um, but at the time it was really just, I think everything on Moogly, as far as I know, has always grown very organically. Um, I never have, I can't think of any time I've ever paid for advertising or anything like that. Um, it was primarily a matter of just making the best quality of tutorials I could, um, linking them when appropriate in my own patterns. Um, and I always give permission for other people. If you're a designer and you don't want to make video tutorials or you can't make video tutorials, um, but you use a stitch that you think needs a video tutorial and I've got one, please go ahead and link to my tutorial or embed it. Um, so that helps too. Um, and other than that, yeah, just, just trying to make high quality content. There's a bunch of it out there these days and getting people to see your content is obviously always the challenge. Um, that is where other social media comes in. Unfortunately, you can't be just on Facebook or just on Instagram or just on YouTube anymore. You kind of have to combine all of them. And that's a big part of that time I spend every day at the computer. Um, but uh, yeah, it's, I think quality and consistency are the keys. And I'm not going to say I've always been awesome at either of those. Um, certainly everyone has a learning curve. I would say to to just get out there and start doing it. And like I said, you want to you want to make them the best you can, but don't let that stop you from starting. Um, same thing with writing patterns or designing patterns. Don't don't expect necessarily to have a gorgeous cabled sweater in nine sizes as your first design. I mean, I'm sure there's somebody out there who's done that, um, but I'm willing to bet that isn't the first thing they actually wrote down. Not if it turned out very well. Um, start making stuff, start writing stuff down, start recording videos. Um, it doesn't have to be perfect. Start writing that blog post. Uh, if you're wanting to start a crochet or knit or craft or mommy or whatever, travel, whatever that blog post is, don't wait for it to be perfect to begin. Nothing is perfect. We're all learning as we go. I'm still improving. I'm still learning new things about crochet every day. It's one of the things I love about it. I'm still learning new things about blogging. The landscape for blogging and YouTube and video making is constantly changing. So you have to be willing to change with it. Um, and you have to acknowledge that, okay, what I do today is going to be the best I can do today. Next week, something better might come out. Uh, a year from now, I might be a better crocheter. I might be a better uh, teacher, whatever it is. And that's okay. You know, we all improve over time. Uh, I think I said earlier, one of, one of my big mantras, when you know better, you do better you know, um, but don't let that, don't let that keep you from doing what you want to try right now, because you have to start somewhere. So it's my little speech on all that. So thank you for that. Uh, let's see. We talked about creating graphs with stitch fiddle. Um, let's see the convention crochet guild of America convention is in new Orleans. So I hope to see you there. I will absolutely be there myself. Um, let's see. And I think I think that is about it. So, yeah. Oh, and people are happy that macrame is back in style, which is very exciting. So, hello to everyone who's tuned in today. Thank you so much. Hello to America, South Africa, Norway, Massachusetts, so many places. I really appreciate you guys being here um, and spending some time with me this afternoon or this morning, depending on where you are, or this evening or tonight. Um, so, yeah, I will be coming back live again uh, closer to the end of the month, uh, hopefully with a fun demo. I'm still waiting for the supplies for the next demo, so we'll see what happens. But I will definitely be coming back and answering questions every month. So if you want to join the Moogly Community Facebook group, that's a great place to leave your questions for me. Um, if you want to email me, it's Tamara Kelly at MooglyBlog.com. If you want to leave comments, not in the chat, because unfortunately once this video is over, I think the chat kind of goes away. But if you leave them as comments on this video, I should be able to see them and hopefully add them to the list to answer next time. 
So um, I will see you again soon. If you will be in the Dallas-Fort Worth area in uh, April, do check that out. I'll be at uh, DFW Fiber Fest. Um, I have a link at the link in the description if you want to check that out as well. And I will be back again with you soon. And I better get back to crocheting and working. So I will talk to you guys later. Have a great day, everybody. And happy Valentine's Day.